Today, I want to go through a 30 day challenge that anyone can follow along to help you get into the UI UX industry. So I've been a designer for over a decade now, and I've worked with clients ranging from large global organizations all the way down to small startup companies. And I've interviewed hundreds of candidates. On top of that, for the last few years, I've been teaching UX UI at educational institution, helping learners get into UX UI. And this is something I've come up with for some of the top students I've worked with, really helping them fast track their journey into UX UI. I want you to set aside four hours per day. It could be one hour in the morning, one hour in the afternoon, and then two hours in the evening. Some of that's manageable for you to follow along and complete all your tasks within a day. And really the two things you need are one, a Figma account, and two, some people to use the test with. Ideally up to five. Uh, these could be your friends, family, anyone who's got some free time available to help you conduct some user tests. So week one, we're really gonna be focusing on your UI, your research and your validation skills. And for day one, the first thing we're gonna do is sign up to daily UI. So daily UI is something that I try to push all my students towards. Every day sends you a task and it's basically a product feature that they want you to work on. And I really can't stress enough how important it is to work on your UI skills because ultimately the, your UI is what's going to communicate your idea. The UI that you come up with, it doesn't have to be revolutionary. You can easily just copy these from existing websites because ultimately what you want to get out of this is really developing your fundamentals for creating UI designs. The second thing we're going to do is booking your user test with your participants. And this because it will help you set a target and a deadline for your task for this design challenge. And the third thing we're going to do for day one is to pick a website for you to reverse engineer. This website is going to be the base for our first case study. And what we don't want to do is pick something like Amazon, where there's an overload of information, but rather something that has one main focus. So for example, um, let's pick Virgin Media's website, for example. It's relatively simple for you to recreate. And the goal of the website is to push the user to do an availability check or Volkswagen's website where the main goal is for you to discover more about their cars. So we don't need to worry too much about animations or anything like that. We just want to focus on the UI fundamentals and being able to create good UI for now. We're going to start by creating the landing page. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to finish that within the first day. What you're going to do on day two and day three is we're going to create a few more pages that you can click through from the landing pages. So hopefully at this point you have created some reusable components that you can start reusing for your subsequent pages. So things like header, footer, CTA button, which will make it much simpler for you to create the next few pages. And then to finish off day three, we're going to link it all up and create a prototype. Now on day four, we're going to focus on user test planning. So really define your research objective. So we we'll use Virgin Media's website as an example again. We want to try and get users to click through to look at their products. We're going to write a test script and we want to make sure you're not asking any leading questions. And lastly, we're going to develop a hypothesis. A hypothesis helps you validate your understanding and your idea about your approach to design. So on day five, we're going to conduct user research. So hopefully you've already arranged for your participants to help you with doing your user research today. And don't forget to take pictures of the user research. My recommendation would be to make sure you're doing it in daylight or a brightly lit room, because a lot of the times when people present their portfolio, uh, there'll be images of them doing user testing, but it'll be a really dark lit room at night. And the images are just really pixelated and it just doesn't look good from a portfolio perspective. So make sure when you're taking photos, it is well lit. Day six, we're gonna analyze the result. So based on the user research you just did, what were the key findings from that? Were there any main pain points that the user called out or anything they wish they can find within the prototype you've just created? And on day seven, we're gonna apply the improvements you've discovered from day six onto your designs. So the reason for this case study is that it imitates a lot of what uh, designers would be doing once they've launched a project and they're doing continuous improvement within the product. So for week two, we are going to create a website for a film. And this case study is really going to focus on your critical evaluation skills. So day eight, first day of week two, first thing we're going to do is pick a film. And why film, you might ask? What I find is most movies don't actually have very good websites. So there's a lot of different things for you to improve on. And also there are a lot of content out there about the actors, the directors, and also marketing material as well for you to work from. Next, we're gonna critically evaluate the website and on areas where you can make dramatic improvements. And on day nine, 10, and 11, we're gonna remake that website. So based on what you identify from day eight, 
you're going to create a new version of the website. And what you can do is take inspirations from different websites. Additionally, you got portfolio sites like Behance, where a lot of people do this, including myself, where people will make websites based on films that they like. So you can take a lot of inspirations and ideas from there that you can implement into your design. So day 12, we're going to focus on writing a test script for your user testing. So this one, we're going to focus on doing an A-B test. So we want users to navigate through the website and try and find something. And what we want to do is we want to stagger the A-B test. So for participant one, we want them to go through the original website first and then get them to run through the same test going on your design. And for participant two, we do reverse, get them to go through your website first and then the original design. This way you'll remove some cognitive biasness within the test. And on day 14, we're gonna evaluate the result and that's the end of week two. So now you've got two case studies and both of these case studies are more realistic to what you'll most likely be doing uh, when you're a junior designer working within an organization. And on week three, we're gonna do a bigger project where you'll be creating a streaming app. And this case study is gonna be more similar to how um, educational institutes like General Assembly and Career Foundry have structured their courses. The reason why I don't recommend people creating loads of these is realistically, you're not gonna be consistently churning out brand new projects. There's gonna be a lot of times where you're gonna be looking at an existing products and identifying ways to improve it. So this case study is gonna be structured a little bit differently. We're gonna conduct some market research. So we will do some SWOT analysis on existing competitors. So you got a lot of different ones to choose from. You got the really high end ones like Netflix, Amazon Prime and Disney Plus where a lot of money have been spent on the user experience of the app versus some of the more local ones like maybe ITV Player or Channel 4 On Demand, where there's a lot more for you to analyze and improve on. You also want to create a user interview plan. And the main thing you want to do here is identify the needs and pain points of users. So hopefully most of the participants you work with, they've got experiences with streaming platforms. So there should be a lot of information you will be able to gather out from them. And on day 16, this is where you're going to be doing your user interview. Again, hopefully you've booked in time to your participants already. And we're just going to go through and ask them experiences that they've had with streaming platforms like Netflix, Amazon Prime and Disney Plus. What do they like about the platform? What do they not like about the platform? What are the main pain points that they experience? We're going to gather as much information as possible and this will feed into our design. So on day 17, we're going to look at synthesizing the result and creating user flows. So hopefully you have a lot of insights from your research that you just carried out. Based on that, we want to create a persona for your product. And if there are a lot of different features your participants have identified, you can use a feature prioritization map, which will help you prioritize your ideas. What we want to focus on is the market positioning of your app. So what's going to give you an edge over your competitor? We can then look at creating a user flow of how you think the app is going to work. On top of that, you can include a site map alongside your user flow as well, both of which is going to support your low fidelity wireframes. So day 18, hopefully you would have finished your user flow and site map. So you've got two options with low fidelity wireframes. You can either create them in Figma. So make sure you just keep it black and white, just simple line drawings, or you can use paper prototype. But for the paper prototype, I know a lot of people say keep it rough, but at least try and use a ruler to make sure the lines are straight. Uh, just so it looks a little bit more presentable. On day 19, we're going to test the low fidelity prototype. So the main thing we want to identify is, can a user navigate your low fidelity wireframe? And what are the main issues that they find with the prototype? Again, don't forget to take pictures. And on day 20, 21, 22, 23, we're going to spend four days creating a high fidelity prototype. By this point, you should have 20 daily UI exercises that you finished and two more case studies that you've done from your first two weeks. So we're going to put everything you've learned so far into practice and create the high fidelity prototype. And that's it for case study three. So by day 24, you should hopefully have 24 days of daily UI and three case studies that are presentable. And then on day 24, we're going to focus on building your portfolio. Let's look at what kind of content we want in a portfolio. So one of the first things to do is start creating thumbnails for each of your case studies. Uh, so you can look online for thumbnail ideas. There are some amazing ideas out there that you can take inspiration from. Secondly, for your color scheme, I'd recommend going with something minimalistic because each of your case studies should have a load of different colors. So if you start defining a few different patterns for your own portfolio, that will then get mixed up with the case studies and it will create a very disjointed experience 
uh, when people are flicking through your portfolio. And then lastly, we're gonna structure your homepage. You can have a look at my portfolio as an example. I've gone with a quick intro and then a one line hook, which for me is 10 years experience, and I specialize in A, B, C, and D. For you, it might be a junior designer passionate about UX UI, and it's okay to include something that you're passionate about, but don't make that the main focus. So for example, something I've read before is Rachel Green, passionate about golf. That has nothing to do with UX UI, so, so make sure your hook relates to you as an individual and also to the UX UI field. Day 25 to day 28, we're gonna focus on structuring your content for the portfolio. And again, feel free to use my portfolio as an example. My recommendation would be a large picture at the top showcasing some of your final design. And then underneath, it'll be a short passage, ideally just one or two lines describing what the product is. One of the most common mistakes I find is people write way too much in their content. There's a debate about this. As someone who's reviewed thousands of portfolios, hirers are not gonna sit there and read through absolutely everything. We just want really concise information that will tell me about your project and why I wanna investigate time into reading the rest of the page. So keep it simple, keep it scannable, and any images you wanna insert onto the content page, make sure you have a consistent Figma frame that you're reusing to keep the image size consistent. You know, the last thing we wanna happen is a massive picture of a prototype and a tiny little picture of a user flow that you've created. On day 29, we're gonna update your CV. So hopefully you've already got a CV written. What you're gonna do is really identify yourself as a product designer or a UI UX, whichever you wanna focus on. Generally speaking, I would recommend making it broader so you can reach out to a wider field, especially for junior positions as well, because you don't really want to limit yourself into just one little niche. Next, remember to link your portfolio at the top. A lot of time I've seen CVs where it says, reach out to me if you want to see a copy of my portfolio. Now, I understand your, the logic behind this because you want them to reach out to you, but if there are hundreds of people applying for the same job, then as a recruiter, they're gonna be looking at the ones that are presenting them with all the information that they're looking for from their applicants for a position. And then on day 30, start applying for jobs. There are loads of different websites you can go through, LinkedIn, Indeed, just look for product design, UI, UX designer roles, and start applying. Even if it doesn't say junior designer, I would probably still apply for those as well. If it says lead designer or senior designer, probably give those a miss. But when I started out, I applied for absolutely everything. And I kept a spreadsheet as well of all the different jobs that I've applied for, where I found them and the dates that I applied for them as well, just so I can keep track of everything. And that's it. That's the Thursday challenge I've set people. And many of them have gone on to become successful designers. Some I've hired into companies I worked at, others in America, Singapore, let me know if you have any questions. And if you want to create really good UI using auto layout, then click on this video here.